to give you a tutorial on the brand new Convention Raider bag pattern released by me at fiercekitten.com shop. So this new bag is a hip style bag where you have it uh, around your waist via a belt and you also have it belted to your thigh. That's optional, you can wear it as a crossbody bag. So I will be going through the pattern directions and showing you step by step how to build your own bag. Please make sure to purchase the pattern if you would like to be able to follow along with more accuracy. The only two pieces of the pattern that are going to require some assembly are C and D. Um, so you'll notice that they are split in half and that we have some letters here to kind of indicate placement. So what I do is I take the two pieces and you butt them up against each other. Don't overlap, just butt them up right next to each other and you're gonna take some tape and you're gonna put it down the line there just to secure it. Now I actually don't have any like regular tape so I'm gonna use packing tape, but use whatever you feel most comfortable with. And all you need to do is to put that tape down. Oh, that's loud. And that'll make the whole piece. So we're gonna do the same thing with the flap. I'm gonna take a giant piece of packing tape and attach it like so. <laughs> okay, and then you have piece C and D and you can see how I've butt them up against each other uh, instead of overlapping. Another thing you can do if you hate cutting on the fold as much as I do is to print twice for any of the pattern pieces there on the fold. Go ahead, piece them together if necessary. So like for the smaller pieces, we actually don't need that. But um, for piece C in particular, go ahead and put together a second piece. And then you're going to take it and flip it over and butt them up against each other. And what this will do is make one piece for you. So if you need to do something like a fussy cut, this will make it a little easier for you and get you a much more accurate cut. So same thing as you did when you were putting together a piece, well, both pieces C, is just tape them together. Like so. And you can do more than, you can do a whole strip of tape if you want. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And then you have a whole piece here. And if you need to see what is down the middle of your bag, which of course, like on this being the back piece may not matter as much, but you could fold it back and then you would be able to see that middle line. You can also use it to mark your middle as needed. In the pattern on page three, you'll actually find a cutting guide. And so when you're cutting out and you're preparing your pattern pieces, um, you can use this handy table to, to mark down what you cut and what you haven't cut to keep track of everything. There are a lot of pieces with this pattern, but uh, they are not terribly large or difficult to prepare. Once you're done cutting and prepping, what you should have is all of your exterior back uh, pieces except for the back are going to be covered with a fleece interfacing, just like this piece. Now as for the back piece, which I almost fumbled on, uh, the back piece is going to have a layer of woven interfacing first to make sure that this back is nice and uh, stabilized, but then you're actually going to uh, zigzag stitch or base down some foam on the back piece. This foam is going to ensure that the bag when sitting on the individual wearing it is not gonna slump because if you don't put this foam in, it's just gonna <laughs> in fall and not look really pretty on the person. I would not advise using something heavier like Decaville, even Decaville light on the back of this. It will be a lot harder to turn. Foam in all of its luster can actually be squished up very nicely and not cause additional wrinkling. So for the lining pieces, like this flap piece, this is the lining to the flap, you're going to put a woven interfacing on the back. Woven interfacing could be replaced with a lightweight fusible if you don't have access to ShapeFlex or woven fuse brands. Um, but uh, all of your lining pieces should be done this way. Now for the pocket pieces, you only need to do one of the pocket pieces each for the flap and then for the main bag. Uh, pocket linings. 
When making the belt connectors, you're going to need a ruler, something to mark with, possibly some leather tape or a way that you can kind of baste it into place. Um, your two one inch D-rings and your two half inch D-rings and some clips. So the directions call for vinyl um, and I have used this glitter vinyl from Meekery World LLC. Um, and you're gonna take your pieces that you've already cut and prepped and you're gonna draw a line down the center of each. And I am actually just using a ballpoint pen for these because no one will ever see any of these markings. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're going to take some of this basting tape. You can just use like double-sided tape. Um, I actually prefer leather tape and I will put links at the bottom in the description so that you can know where I bought all this stuff because that's kind of important. Not everybody knows where to get it. But this is very helpful, especially with leather. You can actually use uh, fabric glue um, like Fabri-Tac. Actually, I have that here. You can use this if you want um, but it does take some time for it to cure. Um, so I don't always advise it. Only because I like to just get things done quickly if I can. And you'll note that I'm not skipping steps and I'm trying not to fast forward through the video because even though the pattern is marked for advanced sewists, uh, you, I really just hate it when videos fast forward for no reason. Um, unless it's repetitive. <laughs> All right, so take off the tape. And I guess you can kind of see it's, it's double-sided. And I'm going to take the raw end here and I'm going to fold it down to the middle and press it into place. Now with these smaller ones, it might be a little more, uh, might be a little more difficult. So just press it and hold it. And then take a pen, your marking utensil or whatever and mark down the middle real quick, just right there. And that's just really for, so when you go to fold it, uh, you know where everything is. I'm just gonna trim the end here because you can see it kind of like winged off a bit. You don't have to do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my half inch D ring right down the middle of the smaller connector and I'm gonna fold it together so the ends are coming. And you see like some, they're a little uneven down there at the bottom, but that's okay. This is gonna be the part that gets sealed into the bag. I'm gonna take a clip and I'm gonna put that on there and I'm gonna set that aside, all right? So now we're gonna do the next one, same way. Take off the basting tape. Well, the cover. Fold into the middle, all your raw edges to the middle. Smooth it out. I probably don't really have to mark the center on these, but I'm just being super meticulous. Put in your half inch D ring in the middle and fold in half. And then you can use a clip to just hold it in place. And we're gonna move that off to the side. So these guys are just sitting up there. Those are your half inch ones. They go at the bottom of the bag. These, however, are done a little differently where that center marking I've been doing actually means a little more. So these are the connectors that are gonna go at the top of the bag when we're done. So same thing, fold your raw edges to the center and press into the tape and that will hold them somewhat <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> somewhat, watch, we're gonna use a lot more tape. <laughs> I am a tape addict. All right, so we've got it folded in the middle, but we're not gonna fold this way because we need these raw edges here to be covered up. So instead, this is where marking in the middle becomes critical. So this is three inches. So what I'm gonna do is I, I basically line up at a half and half inch mark here, um, or take a ruler and line it up so that I have one and a half and just make that mark on there. Now I can see it just fine because I'm using an ink pen, but you, you know, you can use chalk as well. Um, and what I'm gonna do now with this is I'm gonna put another tiny bit of tape in the middle 
and this really, really, really helps. And you're like, but the chalk mark or the ink mark that you made, no, no, no. See, I'll remove the paper and you can still see it. It's still in there. I'm gonna fold the raw end up to that center mark that I made on the one end. Now I'm gonna take one of my one inch D rings and I'm gonna slide it in there about halfway and take this raw end and fold it to the center. Now, I just like to take one of these clips and snap it on one side just to hold it, just for now. Uh, these are gonna get set aside and we're not gonna sew these or rivet these until the very end. We're not gonna touch them for a while. These, however, we're gonna sew. Do your second top connector. If I could get the paper to come off, maybe I shouldn't have trimmed my nails, but I did. We'll just say mistakes were made. Fold the raw long edge to the center. By the way, this tape lasts forever. So if you're like, I don't want to spend any more money on bag making, well, that's fine. You don't have to. However, what I would suggest <laughs> is, it's like, just go look at it. It's like, I think, I don't know, like $15, $20, but I've had that for over a year and I've made well over a hundred bags. So it's an investment. Ha ha, see? Okay, <laughs> folding up to the middle. Again, putting in the D-ring and just folding that last raw edge down and that will encase your D-ring. So what this does is it's gonna hide the raw edges and when you go and you stitch it to the bag at the very end, um, it will we'll have like a little box in here and these raw edges will not be visible in the least ever again, so say goodbye to them. So we're gonna put a clip in that just to hold it and we're gonna leave those off to the side. So what you need to do now is you need to take the half inch connectors and we're actually gonna go and sew these right now at the machine. So one thing to note is that during this patterns uh, tutorial video, I'm actually gonna be using my Juki DU1181N. It's an industrial machine with a walking foot. You do not have to do this. If you are using a domestic machine, um, you will probably, at least for the vinyl portions, need to have a Teflon foot. But if you don't have like a plastic foot or you know, a Teflon foot, you can take a little bit of tape, like scotch tape, and just put it up under your foot um, in order to like make it uh, glide easier over um, the vinyl because vinyl can be a little sticky when it's trying to move across the plate. Hence the reason the walking foot works so well here. Uh, again, an industrial machine is not required for this pattern so please don't panic and think you've gotta go out and find an industrial machine. All right, so you're gonna take your connector and on the right hand side, put it down and you're going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And you're gonna use a top stitch length as well. So we're gonna stitch up to, but not through. And you may wanna hand crank this last one. Otherwise, some machines will get a little wobbly. And you're gonna put your needle halfway down and lift up your presser foot and then turn your work so that it is, a I don't know, perpendicular, there, math term, ha <laughs> ha. And then put your foot down, that's called pivoting. And you're just gonna go over two, three stitches, whatever it takes to get it so that you are again an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then you're gonna pivot again and go down. Free your work, clip away the extra little bits of thread and you're basically done. So now that we're done with the connectors, we're gonna take these guys and we're gonna move them off to the side and move to the next step. So when it comes to the flap, what you're going to need is your flap pieces, exterior and lining. Um, you're going to need your pocket pieces. Only one of them needs to actually be uh, fused with some woven interfacing. 
Um, I say to get uh, these little squares of a stabilizer like a Peltex um, so that you can attach the uh, male magnet. Um, I, I like to use the stabilizer to help make the magnet a little more, well, stabilized. Uh, you'll need a steam ripper, a marking utensil, scissors, and if you want a bag tag, I have these really fancy bag tags and I love them. So I put them on the flap. So first things first, you're gonna take the lining of your flap and you're gonna flip it over so that it is wrong side up. <clears throat> then we're gonna take the pattern piece just like this. And if you haven't done so already, I like to take my uh, seam ripper and just put a little hole where the center of the magnet is supposed to go. You can also use a hole puncher for this, but I don't actually have one in here. Um, and you're gonna line up the pattern piece over that and then take your marking utensil and go inside and just mark right where that magnet center is supposed to go. Okay, so then what I like to do to install the magnet is to take the washer for the magnet and center it over that dot that we made. And I'm gonna mark where those two slits go. Take, very carefully, take your seam ripper and poke through and just seam rip the portion that you need to fit those prongs through. Don't go any more than that. And then you go over to the right side of the fabric and push your magnet through. This is turning into the longest lesson ever in how to make a bag, but I really hope it helps. All right, take one of the stabilizer pieces and poke and draw two little holes in there. I don't really mark those. Uh, this is not visible to the other side and I'm so good at guesswork, I just put it down. So put the stabilizer in and then take the washer for the magnet and put it over on top of that. So it's like a stabilizer sandwich. <laughs> the prongs go outward. People will say to put them inward, but then it has less snug fit. Um, what you, the secret to all of this is, is really this extra stabilizer bit because it stabilizes all these guys so it doesn't slide around. This is never going anywhere. Okay, so that is how you install that. Now I'm gonna take a moment and I'm going to actually put or trim down the flap just a bit. This is important that the, uh, the interfacings that you use uh, line up correctly, otherwise it could throw you off when you go to try to do the stitch later. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim the flap down a smidge. Again, not skipping any steps because I don't want to confuse people. So on the back, this is where I put my label. I basically just mark the center, but I don't put it exactly where the magnet is because if you put it exactly where the magnet is, then it's gonna, they'll, they'll kind of like collide with each other because it's two bulky bits. So what I do is I mark where the magnet goes and then I take this, this little ruler here and I go up. Um, about about a half inch and that's going to be the bottom of my label and everybody's bag label is is different so if you're using uh, woven labels then you're probably just fine you don't have to worry about any of this but since I'm using these me metal uh, tags that I got from China um, I try to be very cognizant of where I place them also noting on the other side, I'm not gonna block one of the cats off. So I did fussy cut a smidge. And you also note that I'm using Decaville on the flap and not fleece. That is a personal preference. It's not, it's not required. It's recommended, it's not required. And I cut the little slits for my tag. And I'm gonna actually use fabric glue. So I'm gonna pull up the prongs. Ooh, that stuff smells good. <laughs> And I'm gonna take the beacon fabric tack and I am just going to somehow, some way, there we go, just put a nice little swirl in here because my tag is so large and square shaped 
that those two little prongs just don't hold it very well. So I need to use the glue and a stabilizing piece in order to ensure it doesn't wiggle around on me. So I'll take this little square here and put the two holes in. And you gotta do this somewhat quickly because once you get to the other side, you wanna make sure that you have enough room or time rather to wiggle it into place. So now I'll put the, my washer down and fold those outward. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna wiggle it, polish it, all that. Just make sure it's straight because sometimes when I install it, it's a little crooked. And um, that's basically all I gotta do with this. So now that was the optional part. So now we'll get into the part where if you're doing the rest of it like you should, you're gonna be making a, a pocket on the flap and I am not gonna skip steps so we're gonna do that. So one of the things that I actually like to do um, is I like to cut out the hole on the pattern itself. Just like this. Very carefully, you really shouldn't use the rotary blade for this by the way, but um, you know, beggars can't be choosers and I, I don't have an exacto knife. So it's like, yeah, it never hurt anyone. So, so now I have this hole in the pattern piece and I'll make it a little easier if I cut it correctly to make the outline uh, for the, for where I'm going to be placing the pocket. So, and for this I'm going to use chalk. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use an ink pen on the front of the bag. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to lightly brush right here where it's supposed to go. And that's just for me to know, okay? Now that's great. That's accidental. I'm not cutting off the cats, okay? So you're gonna take the interfaced pocket piece for your lining, and it should actually be like the seven and a half um, should be uh, vertical and seven inches should be across. I, I, I hate that the pocket is just so, uh, <laughs> The similar in width and height, but uh, flip it over to the wrong side. And you're going to draw that same box, and you can actually use this um, if you want uh, to, to place it where you need to. Uh, what I like to do is take the piece and fold it in half really quickly and just finger press it so I know where the center is. So I'm going to open that up, and then I can just kind of lightly brush over it and know that's my center. All right, so we're going to take this piece, let's see, and we're going to <laughs> freeze. I'm freezing. That's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Three quarters of an inch below the edge. I know this is a little tight. I know it's tight, but we're going to go down three quarters of an inch from the top and just mark that box just like that. And here, you're gonna take your pattern piece, center it, and then make sure this top line is on the line you just drew, and then just draw that box, just like that. All right, now, you're also going to wanna mark the middle. So mark the center of that box, and put in little triangles like that so that you know where you're cutting later. So when we go to the sewing machine, we're only going to sew this top line here and this bottom line here. We're not going to sew the sides. And in past patterns, I've actually told people to sew the sides, but it actually ends up being a lot better for you in the long run if you don't, because you get a lot less puckering in the corners and then you get a much better looking pocket. All right, take this lining piece here that you just drew on and you're gonna take it right side down to the right side up flap. So right sides together basically, and put this over where 
and you may find it easier to kind of fold it down and then put it at the top of the line that you drew to chalk out the outline and lay it down. And make sure you look it over and make sure that it is actually level because since this is the front of the bag, you don't want it to be wonky or crooked looking because it could just throw off the whole look of the bag. Now, then I take two pens and I just pin this down in place so it doesn't slide around while I'm sewing it. All right, now it's ready to sew. I actually go to my domestic machine to do these lighter weight fabrics as a person who uses a industrial machine on the regular for bag construction. Um, sometimes those machines can just chew through these lighter weight fabrics. Um, so again, what we're doing is we're stitching along the top row and the bottom row only. We're not gonna pivot and go all the way around the rectangle. Make sure to backstitch at either end because that's gonna ensure that it's gonna be able to uh, handle you pulling the fabric through to the other side and stretching and tugging at it. If you don't finish off the seam really well, um, then it's possible that it could stretch out of shape or that it might even unravel while you're doing all of that work and that would kind of suck. So there we finished it and now we're gonna go back over to the table and learn how to cut it appropriately. All right, now that you've sewn the box around your zipper, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut at the line in the center where you had uh, drawn it originally. I like to take my rotary blade and just very carefully start that and go up to where the points were. And then take some nice scissors, some with precision, and cut up to, but not through, definitely not through the stitching that you made. Okay. I might have to cut away a little more in general, just up to those points. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the lining and you're gonna flip it to the inside. So. I'm actually gonna sit in my chair for this part. <laughs> so we're gonna take it, I'm gonna move it to the inside. It's kind of like birthing, only without as much satisfaction because you're not actually done with the bag yet. Okay, and just go ahead and observe if you've snipped correctly in the front because you'll see you won't have any puckers if you did it correctly, but if you have puckers, you might have to snip a little more. Sometimes if the thread matches a bit too much, it's too hard to kind of see. Um, and then I like to take a book binder tool and just run it through the seam here to kind of help get it laying flat. Uh, and it, it kind of marks it and, and helps it lay down. It's a neat tool that I uh, purchased after watching a video by Lady Crafts. Okay, so see that's laying nicely, just like that. We'll do the same thing to this piece here, just kind of like finger press it down, whoop, throw the book binder. You can also use a um, point turner if you want, now that I think about it, if you've got a nice plastic one, that'll work just as well. I'm just gonna, it's like scoring. So we're gonna score the seam and then it'll help it kind of push everything out so you don't get like anything that's majorly bunched up. Awesome, okay, now move everything out of the way and I'm gonna get my iron out and I am just going to start working on steaming this down so it stays where it needs to when I go to sew it. Now I normally work at an ironing board. I'm working here only because I want you guys to be able to see everything that I'm doing. And my ironing board is not necessarily in the best visible space for recording. It's actually hanging off of a door on the opposite side. I'm gonna 
burst of steam this and flip this over. You may find this piece here, since it's only like three quarters of an inch of wiggle room, you can, if you want, extend your pattern if you have a tough time with this. Um, but sometimes I just apply some tape on the back anyway, just to kind of keep it where it needs to be. All right, so that's good enough. So I'm gonna slide this over here very carefully. And now we are going to have our zipper pocket. So let me grab my tape. Specifically, I use a quarter inch tape. Uh, again, this is where a lot of people use the wash away tapes. So I'll take my tape and I'll apply it right along the top and the bottom edges. Now for the sake of the staying where it needs to, I am going to put a little bit behind it. You can, of course, if you would like to do it, um, pin that down but it might be difficult for you to wiggle around the machine if you do that. Okay. So I don't worry about wrinkles and tucks on the opposite side. I, honest to goodness, only care about the other side of it. This is a very flat pocket. No one's gonna see that. So I don't worry about it. Um, and, and if you do, that's fine. You can, you can correct that on your own, um, but for me, it's not a top priority. All right, so I'm gonna take my quarter inch tape and I'm gonna lay it down on the top and the bottom of the box. All right. Then I'm going to carefully take away the paper and reveal the tape. Awesome. Let me just tug this a little bit. Get it laying a little more flat. I do care. I lied. <laughs> All right. Now you're going to take your zipper and holding it up with the zipper head, the direction of it going for opening, uh, being on the right, you're going to take it and you're going to flip it so that it is right side down. And the zipper head may get stuck on the, the tape. That's fine. And you're just going to gently place it, just very, very, very gently place it where it needs to go. Um, now I use zipper tape as an actual zipper tape, not the basting tape. So it is a little, uh, little different if you're using a stock zipper uh, like from a craft store because it doesn't actually have like stoppers and such. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a little more tape just so I can ensure that these ends here stay closed up while I'm sewing. Just like that. All right, now you're gonna flip it over and <laughs> take the zipper head out and look at the zipper and see if the alignment is good for you. Um, oftentimes I'll come back around to the front edge and I'll kind of just lift it and finagle it into place where I would like it to go. Now this is gonna be a welt style pocket and so a little bit of that lining fabric is gonna show. Awesome. So now that I've got that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to whatever main machine you're using because when I stitched that initial pocket, I used my, uh, my domestic machine. But for my main machine, I would prefer to actually use it for all the top stitching. And so then we're going to top stitch around this box. All right, taking your piece and very carefully lifting the foot, go ahead. And I like to start in uh, about just over the top section here um, and top stitching about with a five number five zip about a quarter an inch away from the edge but I mean totally up to you how you would like to do it um, for me uh, going right up against the edge is a little dangerous so in this example I'll actually do that but I slide the zipper head out of the way initially okay I'm gonna put the zipper uh, the I'm sorry the needle in halfway just to get it started and then I'm gonna stitch forward, step back, and carefully top stitch. Now when you get to the zipper head, you're gonna put your needle halfway in, 
lift the presser foot and gently move the zipper head back and that'll keep it out of the way so you don't have like a bump in your top stitching. When you get up to the corner, you're gonna line it up, lift your presser foot with the needle halfway down and pivot your work and stitch down the other end. Now, my machine has trouble going over those and maintaining stability, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. And then when you get to the other end, needle halfway down, press her foot up, and pivot, and then continue stitching. All right, now we're getting back to the, the zipper head. So needle halfway down, lift the presser foot, slide it out of the way. It's like it never even existed. And continue. And now I'm back at the other end. So needle halfway down, pivot your work, and then go across. I think. I mean, you may have to like finagle with it a little bit in order to ensure that you're putting it down in the right spot to get it lined up. I have to worry about this a little more with my machine. Um, but what you want is to place the last needle pivot of halfway down, but such that when you stitch forward, you're going to run right into the line and you'll have it perfectly lined up. And then stitch forward and backward and lock it in place. And that's basically it. It's a nice little ending there. Okay. Now, since I'm also using this bonding polyester thread, I'm just gonna go ahead and melt the ends down. I need to explain this so people are wondering why I'm trying to burn my bag to pieces. <laughs> but there you have your little welt zipper pocket on your flap. And no cats are cut off. <laughs> All right. Now we're done with putting in the zipper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your flap, this assembled piece, and you're gonna flip it over so that it's right side down. And I have cats, so let me get the cat hair off. <laughs> then you're gonna take the unlined or uninterfaced piece of lining and you're gonna take it right side down so that right sides of your pockets are together. So just a moment to point this out. Yes, the zipper tape is exposed, all right? And again, I have said this before and I mean it, this is an interior pocket. No one's going to see this, so I wouldn't worry about it in the least. All right, so you're gonna put your right sides together and then you're going to clip them down into place. Now, if you use tape on the back like I did, you'll probably need to pull this up a bit to expose it. And I'm actually gonna put my clips down this way so it's easier for me. And don't worry about any excess. We're gonna trim off excess in a bit and sometimes you'll find these don't line up perfectly, which is fine. You will just need to trim it up in the end and I'll show you exactly how to do that. All right, so now we're gonna take this over to the machine. All right, so you're gonna go back down to a normal stitch length for this, and what I like to do is take it flap side up, so exterior up, and kind of move it out of the way, because it'll be easier for you to see exactly where the pocket is gonna be. And you're just gonna stitch all the way around it, very carefully. And of course, this will probably be easier if you're having like a zipper foot, but stitch about a quarter inch away. And then again, moving the flap out of the way so you can better see the pocket lining. And I'm using the interface lining as a guide. So again, a quarter inch away. You see I've got excess. I'm not worried about that because I will trim it away. That was probably something I was lazy about earlier and that's fine.
and backstitch. And you should be done, and that is sewing the lining down. Okay, now you're gonna take your work and you're gonna flip it over to the other side or throw it, that works too. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up and lay it nice and flat and go down the sides and just trim it. Trim it to fit. And the reason you wanna do this is because you still want it to be in the seam, but you do want to kind of trim down that seam allowance so that it's not too bad, All right? This, is, this end of the pocket is going to get caught in the top stitch and in the actual seam and is like refusing. So if you, cut, if you end up cutting a little bit of your stitching away, that's totally fine. I say that a lot, but it really, it really is fine. It may help to actually take pens or clips and just clip around and grab those clips. I left them at the machine because I'm smart. And we're just gonna put three in here just to hold it nice and taut. The goal is for it to get caught in the side seam, not necessarily the bottom seam. So you see it's a little short and that's fine but on the sides we want it. And that's so that the pocket lining doesn't shift up or bunch up inside the bag. It's nicely tacked down. It's the same tactic I used with the Mighty Messenger bag. All right, so now you're going to take your lining and you're gonna put it right side down onto the right side of the flap. So your flaps, your flap pieces should be right sides together. And then you're going to clip around all the way around to secure it down. And I like to kind of push and pull on it to make sure that it's nice and taut. Sometimes having things like the magnet and, and the uh, bag tag, and then of course like the bigger decorative uh, zipper heads can be a little <laughs> counterproductive when it comes to making sure this is nice and tight because you don't want the flap lining to be loose, all right? So now we're gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around the edge with a normal stitch length. And we're gonna stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Everything so far is quarter inch. And again, you can see like over here, the, the pocket seam right there kind of got cut off. Again, don't worry, that's gonna get caught in the seam. Okay, coming in to the machine again, we're gonna start at the upper right corner on the lining side, quarter inch away from the edge, and you're going to stitch forward and back to back stitch it. That will secure all of your stitching. Now I like to make sure I kind of lift up the end of this in order to make sure the magnet doesn't get caught on anything. It's the male magnet, but you just never know. There's just a lot of things that could get caught on. And carefully go around the lining and again, making sure it's nice and taut. Sometimes even with a walking foot machine, it has a tendency to bun bunch up the fabric. Sorry, stitching and talking is actually really hard. No matter how many years of doing it on Twitch, I have, I have what, four, four years and a couple of months. Woof. All right, so here we're coming around the other corner, carefully, and then just go up that edge. This is our last edge here. And back stitch at the top. And you're done with that stitch. Now what you're going to do is you're gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna trim away a little bit of that bulk right on the outside of the seam. Since it's a quarter inch seam, you can opt against doing this, but because of the extra pocket bulk, I suggest not doing that. Uh, and this is also is why only one end of the pocket lining is actually uh, interfaced, so it's a lot less bulk. It does make for a very sturdy flap though. So I usually leave about an eighth of an inch of fabric. You also won't have to clip your corners because there's just really not enough fabric to worry about it. All right. So there is the clipping. We're gonna throw all that away. And now through the open hole at the top of the flap, you're going to take your thumbs 
and just start to roll it back, kind of like putting on, like reverse putting on pantyhose and push with your thumbs at the bottom of the work to get it to flip right side out. And be careful. Do not pull on it to tug on the zipper or anything. Um, I really, if you're gonna do it, push through. Just stick your hand in there, ram it real hard, real good, yeah, like that. <laughs> when you get to the end though, you can start pulling on it. I just don't advise doing it in the very beginning when the zipper is still on the inside because you can really break a zipper by doing that. So, would not advise. Ah, pushing, pushing, pushing. Getting all those corners out. And you're like, oh gosh, kittens, those corners look horrible. Well, that's why, that's why I take, like, this is the book binder, but I also have a bamboo point turner. And so I take that, but I don't use the pointy end. I use the round end, which is actually kind of sloped. See, this isn't, it's just a book binder, right? And I take that sloped end and I brush up on the inside. This is great for those curved corners like that. Same thing here, I'll just have to flip it over on the other end and just brush up on the inside and see it gets, it gets everything nice and poked out. Now one thing you want to do is kind of stroke along the bottom of the bag too, just to make sure that you get all of that fabric out. Awesome. So what we're gonna do now is take clips and clip all the way around. And again, I was horrible habit of leaving my clips right over at the sewing machine. So I just got up to have to get them again. That's fine. All right. <laughs> so we're just gonna clip everything down. I like to do, you can actually press and steam, but I just like to do this. I think it saves me a little getting up time. Um, and I can also be a little more touchy feely and make sure that I'm actually like rolling out that seam that I don't have extra bulkiness um, that I just feel like sometimes I can't really do at an ironing board. Um, one, it makes, it makes it really hot and hard to work with. Um, and two, I just, you know, this is my preference. You can do either. Also make sure that when you choose a zipper, that if, if you have a longer zipper that you've trimmed it <laughs> so it's not like stuck here. Uh, I did that once in testing this pattern and it looked really bad. So make sure you trim your zips, okay? Before you flip anything. If you st I had, since I used zipper tape, I actually had the exact size that I needed to cover the hole. Um, but like if you've bought a, a pre-made zip, then you're gonna want to, you're gonna want to trim that. All right, so now we're gonna take this over and we're gonna top stitch it. All right, coming up here to your machine, make sure to move to a longer stitch length for top stitching. And we're gonna take on the right hand side, right side up, because you wanna be able to watch this, a quarter inch away, you're gonna top stitch this guy. All right, so I stitch forward and backward, and then I just go along. And again, I like to lift the bottom end. It's not really pictured. Uh, I'm not catching that right now in the film, but uh, it's just to keep the magnet from getting snagged on something at the end of the machine, because mine's a flatbed, so it can sometimes get stuck in that little crevice at the end. Crevasse. All right, so going very slowly at the corner. Sometimes, sometimes I find it's best to hand crank uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a risk here and just go. Yay, it worked! <laughs> Pay off. Okay. And going around. I do not feel confident of this machine, even though I've owned it for a year and a half. It still scares the bejesus out of me. It's like one of those things that you're gonna pick it up over time, right? All right, so. And then coming up to the very end, I'll stitch it a little faster, look at me with my confidence, and back stitch at the top. And then you're done. Okay, so now your flap is done. You can open up the zipper and look at the pocket. And again, like, see how tight it is? If anybody wants to pop in there and look and say, oh my gosh, there's zipper tape, then something's wrong with them. 
Go look at any retail store bag and you'll see that's not a problem. However, if you don't prefer that, you can actually uh, sandwich your zipper in when you do that first um, box where you top, the top stitch or stitch the top and the bottom. Uh, again, not required, but uh, yeah, if you prefer that instead, go for it. Um, so the flap is done. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this and we're gonna set it off to the side and we're gonna move on to the front pocket. All right, moving on to the main front top zipper pocket. That's a long word, but there's so many zipper pockets on this thing, I thought that was a better way of expressing what it is. Um, you're gonna take the top of piece A, so that, that's basically your, your main top piece for the front, and you'll note that the front and the back are, are different, um, but once sewn together, the front piece, the front main piece should line up with the back piece. So. You're gonna take that and you need your lining pieces. Now I'm using waterproof canvas and that is different than um, what I use for the other pockets. And the only reason for that is because this big pocket can actually hold a Surface Go, an iPad mini, a Nintendo Switch, uh, 3DS, all that stuff like electronics. And so I like to, I, just for my customers, I do like to use waterproof canvas for that. Um, I don't advise using this on the, on the flat pocket only because it is a lot bulkier because it's got a layer of PVC on the back. All right, so that's enough of that. So you're gonna take piece A and you're just gonna like turn it to the side just like so. And we're gonna take a ruler and it's one of my longer ones. And what we need to do is draw a line with chalk or marker, whichever, since the dark fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and use chalk. Um, and we're gonna draw a line that's 2.795 inches away from this bottom most edge. So we're gonna go up one, two, and then, whoop, I need actually a longer ruler. That's funny. I'm actually cheating and using my table. I don't know if that's really cheating, but one, two, and seven, five. So, and let me slide this up a bit more so I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. I want to slide it more. <laughs> How embarrassing. We're just going to take, take that and draw a line. This is going to cut off a cat. What am I going to do with myself? <laughs> All right. So we're going to draw that line and that is where the top of the pocket piece is going to go. So if you, if you did just use regular fabric and you interfaced, you're gonna take the interfaced piece and you're gonna turn it so that it's right side down. And then we're gonna take our marking utensil and we're going to mark a line across the top that is three quarters of an inch away from the edge. This is the exact same steps that we did for the pocket that was on I'm just, since I'm using chalk, it's a little bulkier. Um, this is the same set of steps that we used for that flat pocket, right? Okay, so now we're gonna draw a box that is going to be seven inches wide and a half inch tall. Now, I again, I like to take the piece and just fold it in the center and finger press right about where the pocket's gonna be so I can kind of see and, and mark it out in general about where that center is gonna be. You guys can't see my ink. I can see it, but you can't see it. So that makes it useless for you. Okay, so then going down. So again, you can use a tool like this, or if you have another, um, I actually bought a zipper template from Tops and Bobbins um, that's by Piera um, that has all of the zipper sizes that I need. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna do it the old way. All right, so, <laughs> so we're gonna go put it uh, three and a half inches down and I'm gonna mark my, my little zipper area there. And again, three and a half inches away from the middle on the opposite side, line it up really nicely. Whoop. <laughs> and then, no and then, we're gonna take the line, that's why I put the line all the way across, and we're gonna go down a half an inch. Now with this guy, what I can do is I can actually just eyeball that half an inch by lining up, just like so. 
So basically the bottom line of your zipper should be an inch and a quarter away from the top edge. So you can just pop that in there. And so there's your box for the zipper for right now. Um, you do need to draw that line in the middle so you know how to cut it. And again, this is, this is PVC backed fabric, it's waterproof, so it's a little more difficult to draw on. If you're using interfaced, uh, an interfaced cotton, you're not gonna have this problem. So I'm putting a little extra work in it just because of that. Now get your piece A again, and I want you to fold it in half, just like that. And you're gonna mark the center along the top here and the bottom here, because you're gonna need that later. And then you have like this finger pressed little center area there, but I'm gonna draw that line along the top so that we can take this. So you're gonna take your pocket piece right side down with piece A right side up, and you're gonna line up those center lines. And then take two pins, just as you did with the flat pocket. And if you use chalk, be careful not to rub away all the the chalk lines. And there you go. Just as we did with the flat pocket, we're gonna come back over to my domestic machine. Again, just because I wanna be able to use a lighter weight needle and lighter weight threads for the step. I do find that the bulkier thread that I personally use, which is a bonded polyester uh, number 69, is just really just thick and it makes it really hard to get a nice clean welt pocket. Um, so if you have an industrial machine, you may want to consider using a domestic in order just to do like these smaller fine line things. So we're sewing across that top line and again, back stitching to lock everything in place at the beginning and the end of the stitches. And now we're going to go down the second line, again, skipping the side seams. And uh, as you saw with the flat pocket, it does make it look a lot cleaner. So I highly recommend taking this route when you're making those uh, zipper pocket openings or even the slip pocket. You could do this for a slip pocket as well. And it's nicely interfaced and sturdy and can last through time. So we're gonna finish off this stitch and then take it over to the cutting table and work with it. All right, you're gonna take out your pens now that you've t uh, stitched the top and the bottom row. And once again, you're gonna take a rotary blade, an X-Acto knife, whatever it takes. And you're gonna cut on that center line in the middle as well as you can. And of course, be careful. And then take a nice sharp pair of scissors to cut up to but not through those stitches at the end. Again, not through. That's a very big mistake. Very big. I've done it. Do not advise. Do not pass go. <laughs> All right. So now that you got this, what I like to do is go ahead and flip it to the inside. There's now a whole lot of fabric to work with here in terms of the top piece. So you'll just have to be a little patient, a little kind with getting this flipped correctly. As you can tell, even I'm struggle bussing to keep it right, but it's just this one piece here. It's like, ah, okay. Ah, oh, no, don't flip the other way. Take the book binder and score that seam. Tugging, tugging, tugging on it as you're doing it. And that will help immensely. You can also do the point turner again. Totally fine to use it for that. All right, now I am just for my sake going to go ahead and stick a pen in that just to hold it down. Only so I can work with it. And it's just because piece A is so small. That's like literally the only reason. Okay, now I'm, now I'm lost. Okay, so I'm gonna take, there we go. All right, and now for the top part, might find it's easier to flip it over and kinda just pin it down. 
to where it needs to be. And then for the side, and look how nice and, and that is. I will give uh, <laughs> waterproof canvas credit where credit is due. It does fold out very well on pockets. Uh, I just don't, the stuff can be really hard to use if you are, um, if you are stitching on curved edges, for example, like when we get to the 3D pocket, uh, you'll, you'll make notice of just how much more rough that is if you're doing this with waterproof canvas. If you did choose to use uh, waterproof canvas for the pocket lining, don't worry about it. You're not going to have any major problems. All you have to do is clip the clip around um, your gusset and the pocket piece and you'll be fine. I'm only saying that at this point because I don't want people panicking. <laughs> All right, so now since this has PVC on it, I'm not actually gonna iron it. Um, I am just going to you know, finger press on the outer edge, make sure I don't have any creases. Um, but now what you can do is you can take your zipper, um, and again, I'm using zipper tape, so I'm a little cheaty with this, but, I'm gonna flip the work over and take a double-sided tape. You can just pin this down if you like. Once again, that's totally fine to do that. But I prefer double-sided tape for attachments. And I will be removing the pens once I have the zipper in place. That was just to hold it down for my sanity while I was doing this part. Okay. Now, if you're using a cotton, you won't have a problem with this. <laughs> this is just because I'm using waterproof canvas. And we'll take away the top side of the double-sided tape to expose the sticky side. And then whichever side is gonna be um, open, the open direction, um, you're gonna take that, so that would be your right side and you're gonna flip this guy over so it's face down. And just center your zip on top. And don't like press it down or anything. Flip, gently flip over and look at the zipper, get the zipper head out of there first and look it over and see what it looks like. Is it crooked? Yes, it is. So I'm going to adjust that here and now with the tape and make sure that everything looks really nice um, so that I don't have to worry about it once I stitch it in and it looking really, you know, janky. So we're just gonna take it and kinda, kinda rework it. And then what I'll do is I'll just take the zipper head and slide it up and down and make sure it looks good. It's not getting caught on anything. And that's, that's really nice. So um, now I can remove those pins and we can go and we can top stitch this on your main machine. All right, so back at your main machine, you're going to lift the presser foot and you're going to put your needle about halfway down just along the top and to the inside of the seam. Um, I'm gonna stitch about uh, between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch away from the edge of the pocket opening and I'm going to be using a top stitch length. Um, so what I'll have is, is um, basically, um, if I can get this right, <laughs> Uh, for about 4.5 uh, millimeters for my stitch length. So I'm gonna start by stitching forward, then backward, and then forward again. And again, like when I get to the zipper head for this one, I'm just gonna slide it back and out of the way for a little bit until I can get enough room and just stitch down. And then when I get to the zipper head, put my needle halfway in, lift my presser foot and move it out of the way. And again, making sure that everything stays nice and even and looks really nice. And then continue stitching. And so I'm using my fingers to press and hold things in place. When you get to the end, you're gonna put your needle halfway down, lift the presser foot and rotate. And if you see any wrinkles, like I have a, just a little bit right here, I'm kind of pulling and tugging on this just to ensure it looks good. And when you get to the end, needle halfway down, 
you're going to pivot your work and continue sewing. And I like to hold things down. Now we're coming up to the zipper head again. So needle halfway down, lift the presser foot, slide it out of the way. And then you don't have to worry about it. All right, needle halfway down, pivot your work and continue. Now here's where I get picky and I actually will lift the foot and make sure that the needle is going down at a point where it could stitch straight into my next stitch. So I, get, I don't have like anything that's jagged or uneven. And stitch forward to close it and backward and forward again and that will secure your stitching. And that is how you do that pocket. Back over at your work area, you're going to take this piece that you just assembled, so piece A, and here's the, the lining. Uh, and again, it would be interfaced if you chose that route. Flip it over so that the right side of your pocket is facing up. Take your other piece of pocket lining fabric and put it right side down. And just as with the other pocket, we're gonna clip all the way around the edge so that we can get it secured in place and then we're gonna stitch all the way around. The only difference with this pocket is we're not gonna actually trim anything down per se, except to maybe even up the seams on the sides if you want, because we don't want, we don't want to lose any of this and this is gonna get caught in the bottom of the bag, but again, you know, it's, it's one of those, um, yeah, anyway, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I just like to hear myself talk. And put that in there. Awesome. And we flip it over. You can see there's a little bit of excess at the bottom, but smooth it down just to, just to get it kind of lined up. This pocket, you don't want to have like a misalignment or have be puffy because it'll actually affect the look of the bag. Um, so again, smooth it out and it's okay if you've got a little excess here, like at the bottom, you can trim that away. So now we take this over to the machine and we stitch the pocket. All right, back at the machine, you're gonna take piece A right side up and you're just gonna kind of move the bits of it out of the way that you don't need. So you can see the lining of the zipper. And we're gonna go in and you're gonna wanna use a regular stitch length for this. So I went back down to 3.5. And again, I'm an industrial machine, so domestic would probably be more like 2.5 or 3 millimeters. And you're gonna stitch all the way around the edge. And here, like, it does help. I have to stitch at an angle because of my walking foot being so big. But it does help if you wanna get a zipper foot. You won't have this issue on a domestic machine. <laughs> I like to back stitch over the zipper on this one only because it's a it's going to be a more used pocket. I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge. Do not leave one of the ends open. Quarter inch seam allowance on everything up to this point. Don't deter from that. You get to the zipper, back stitch over the zipper, and then back stitch at the top where you started your seam. And you're done. All right, taking your main pocket piece, you're just gonna very carefully move the, the piece A out of the way. And I am gonna go ahead and trim the pocket down just a little bit, just so it looks nice. I just want it to look nice. And see, it kind of got bunched up at the top when I was stitching. Again, if I was using a zipper foot, it would not have done that. It would have given me a little more wiggle room. Again, that is not ever going to be seen by anyone. It doesn't affect the end product, so don't fuss over it. All right, and then the prod on here. All right, and get, always keep a clean work area. 
So toss that. And then this is piece A, and it is assembled. And so you can now move this off to the side. All right, the next step is the 3D pocket. This is actually going to be the longest part of the bag outside of the cutting, okay? So I wanted to show you guys what the 3D pocket actually is. So it stands away, and a lot of the bags that you'll see don't have like this front zippered pocket like you would see like on an industrial style backpack. Um, so it's basically going to be a zipper gusseted um, right down, right down the center here, you got a zipper gusset with a bottom gusset, um, and it is fully lined and the zipper is not exposed. Um, you're going to be stitching around it twice. And as you read through the instructions, you'll probably think, oh my gosh, there's going to be a raw edge open on the inside of the bag. Arr! And nobody likes that. But the other thing is like, this is a technique that doesn't require bias binding. If you prefer bias binding, go for it. Seriously, it's totally fine. But you also can't really do like a drop in lining because you have to turn around and attach it to the bag's front panel. Okay, so you will be stitching around it twice. It will cover up the raw edges, so you won't need to worry about it. So let's get started on that part, okay? All right, to start your front zipper pocket, which is the 3D pocket, you're gonna take your pieces. Um, they are going to be piece uh, F, G, and H. And these are the small gussets. So you have your bottom gusset here, and then um, F and G, are actually the smaller bits that are for the zipper. So these pieces will go with the zipper and this will go along the bottom. So you're gonna first take these pieces and you're gonna fold them in half and you're gonna take a pen or your marking implement and you're going to mark the centers on either side. So we're gonna go through each of the pieces, both lining and exterior and mark them in the same manner so that we can know where the centers are. And you wanna do that now, instead of waiting until the end once you have like a, a zipper gusset in the round because it's a lot easier, a lot easier to do it this early on. All right, take your pieces and put them together, lining with exterior. And we're just gonna move these out of the way really quickly so that we can install the female zipper. So you're gonna take your piece E, which is the front pocket panel for the 3D pocket, just like this, and we're gonna flip it over so the uh, interfacing is facing up. Then we're gonna take our pattern piece, and if we haven't done so already, cut a hole right where, right where you expect the middle of your magnet to go, and you're gonna place the pattern piece over the, the, the main piece and go ahead and mark where you want that to be. While you're in here, go ahead and mark the center bottom and the center top of that piece. You'll also want to do those markings on the lining. So grab that same piece, E, but the lining that should be interfaced and mark the bottom center and the top center. All right, going back to your exterior pocket piece, we're gonna grab that female zipper. Here's the washer and the stabilizer. We're gonna use the washer as a guide for where the prongs should be cut through. Take your seam ripper, very carefully poke through and slice a small little channel on either side. You're gonna take the female end of the zipper, or sorry, magnet, and push it through. Cut some uh, prong alleyways into the stabilizer and slide that over. Then take the washer and put it over. So now, stabilizer sandwich. Take the prongs and fold them to the outside. Now we've been through that before, don't do it to the inside. And there you have that front panel and it is completely prepped and ready to go. So now what we need to do is we need to grab the really long zipper. This is the 15 inch zipper. So this is the, this is the zipper that you're going to be using for the 3D pocket. Um, and 
I, I say to use a number five zipper and I pretty much mean it. So please uh, don't, don't not use that. <laughs> But um, I like to use, a, I like to have a, like a little bit of extra space on the end with the zipper gussets. And the reason for that is, is um, purely because at least with zipper tape, I don't have a stop on either end. Um, and so uh, it, it gives me a little more wiggle room so that the zipper tape doesn't kind of pull apart or fall out of the gusset. So if you see that, that I'm like leaving some along the edge, that's totally fine. So first things first, we're going to take your smaller piece F, and this is small and I understand that, but you know, whatever. This is going to be the front of the bag. So whichever direction the zipper is going to open, which is gonna be on this end, this needs, this end here needs to be the front. So we're gonna take the zipper, if you, if you see it's like the zipper heads off to the right, we're gonna take the, the piece F and we're gonna face it right side down on the zipper tape. And I'm gonna be centering mine again because of what I mentioned. Let me grab my clips because of course I left them over yonder. Oops, making the camera jiggle. Okay, and then I'm going to put the clips in. I'll just clip all the way across just to hold it down. Now, if you want to, if you feel more secure doing this, you can go to a machine and you can baste this down. Since I'm using um, an industrial machine, I don't really like to do that. Also, I'm really confident at this point. Um, so if you go to your machine, you can baste this down uh, with a long stitch and then come back and put on the back side. So, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip that step because I actually don't, I don't like to do that. I feel it, it loosens up the zipper tape a bit. So then what you're going to do is take this work and you're gonna place it with that the matching lining piece right side up. And you're gonna lay it down on top and match them up end to end. And then just go through and clip it where it needs to go. Let's see, the, the fabric is so stable that it really shouldn't shift around. But if you feel better doing it, you can absolutely just base that stitch on first. And then that, and that's fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. Everything up to this point has been a quarter inch and I have not deviated from that. So a quarter inch all the way down. Okay, back at the work area, you're gonna take the pieces that you just sewed for lining and exterior, and you're gonna fold them out, and you're going to line them up and clip them. And this is why I mean, it's like a really small work area with this one piece, but if it was any bigger, that front pocket would be so floppy. Actually, to tell you the truth, why don't we iron this? Let's, uh, let's not skip over that. So I'm gonna grab my iron. It's just harder for me to do it up here, so I don't like to do it. <laughs> and we're gonna iron out the lining. Just press it. And if you're using plastic uh, zipper tape, then you may want to avoid in, uh, the, the actual zipper teeth and uh, try to use a precision point at the end of your uh, iron. 
So I'm just gonna gently pop through here and iron it out and that will help. I'll give it some steam. Let's do it one more time on this side. Again, avoid, I'm avoiding the teeth because mine are acrylic. Awesome, okay, so I'll move that. Then, now, <laughs> I can clip it out of the way. And that's really just to leave it right there. It's such a small piece, it just doesn't wanna lay flat. So if I clip it in this manner, it really just helps kind of uh, keep it, keep it uh, where it needs to be sitting. So when we go to top stitch, it looks nice. Oof. Okay, all right, now for the next part. Now you're gonna take, so this is the front of the, of the pocket. You're gonna take the exterior piece, so your zipper piece right now, the gusset should be right side up. And if you, if you had to do what I did here and leave like some excess tape, just go ahead and, and like mark a straight line down so we know where to put it on this side so it's not like catty cornered. And you're gonna take your pocket piece for the back of the gusset and you're gonna face it, place it right side down on top of that zipper tape on the other side. I'm gonna flip the work around so it's easier and then I'm gonna clip it into place. Keep that fancy little zipper head out of the way He's sitting right under there. It may help to just put a clip right where the zipper head is. Because the fabric will tend to like shift around where the zipper head is located. I don't know if there's enough clips on this, but uh, I definitely have room for more. <laughs> okay, leave this the way that it's sitting with exterior for the other side facing up, so the zipper's facing up, and take the lining piece for the other side and have it right side up. You're gonna take this assembly and you're gonna put it on top of the lining. And now you're gonna clip it into place. And again, if you wanted to, you could have basted this to it first. That's a, absolutely an option for you if you prefer to do it that way. There's so many different ways to cook an egg when it comes to sewing. I don't like to dictate one or another. All right, now we have this. We're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna sew it down. All right, back at the table, you're gonna take your work and you're going to press that gusset down. Let's start with the exterior here. Just get the zipper head out of the way. Again, you're working with really thin pieces, so it's okay if you can't get it all. Use a little steam. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna take this and move it out of the way for safety's sake real quick. There we go. Now I won't burn myself and die. Worst thing ever. All right, so now what we're gonna do is the same thing we did with this side. You wanna pull it taut, like both the lining and the exterior, and you wanna clip it together and it should be wrong sides together at this point. 
Again, pulling very tautly and making sure they're lined up. Usually it's the ends that have the most problem. Okay, so now that you have this finished gusset, before you go and you stitch anything down, you need to take a ruler and you need to look at it and make sure that it is about two and a half inches wide. So it is. So that's what it should be. If you're using a number five zipper, this is gonna be two and a half inches wide, which is exactly how wide your gussets are. Now, if you wanted to use a different zipper, if you use something that was a little smaller, not as, not as wide as this tape, um, you can shave down your gusset pieces. So the instructions cover that, so you just, now I won't need to do that, but if you find that this gusset piece is too big, um, then what you'll need to do is just, just uh, do the best you can, leave one end long, and then cut off the excess at the end and you'll be fine. But this gusset piece here, once assembled, um, should be 2.5 inches tall. Um, so now we're gonna take this over to the main sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch on either end of this. And you're probably wondering, well, how are we going to attach the gussets? Well, there's going to be a nice little trick for that and I will go into detail as soon as we're done with the top stitching. Um, it does entail leaving the zipper ends open, but that's temporary. All right, so let's go over to the machine and we'll top stitch this. All right, at your main machine, put your machine at a stitch length that's good for top stitching. Again, I like 4.5. And we're gonna go an eighth of an inch from the edge and we're just gonna top stitch all along the zipper. Again, pull on that fabric, make sure it is nice and taut and standing away from the zipper tape. Now you're gonna go and you're gonna put your needle halfway through and move the zipper head out of the way. and top stitch the rest of the way. All right, there's one side, flip your work over, and again, from the exterior facing up, an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the tape, tar start top stitching. Now we've come up to the zipper head, needle halfway down, slide that guy out of the way. And that's it for the top stitching. Okay, back at the table, go ahead and take off those clips if you still had them. We don't want them in the way. All right, with your zipper gusset facing up, right side up, take your zipper gusset, <laughs> the bottom gusset piece, uh, H, and you're going to lay it right side down. And we're gonna start on one of the ends and you're just going to clip through the exterior only. You're not gonna clip through any of the lining piece. And I will go into that as, and, and, as to why in a little bit. So we're only going to clip or pen, whatever you prefer, those pieces lining up the edges. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna clip down one side of the zipper gusset and the other side of the zipper gusset. That's looking 
pretty fun. All right, so we're gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna talk you through how I do this. And this is actually a technique that um, I gleaned through a couple of swoon uh, bag pattern tutorials as well as Mormino. Um, Lauren Mormino, she is a wonderful seamstress who makes a lot of bag videos here on uh, YouTube as well. All right, taking your piece with the lining side up, the, the pieces that are free, you're going to take one of the lining pieces and just fold it back in a way. So you don't want to stitch through the lining. You only want to stitch through the exterior pieces and only attach that exterior gusset. So a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch. So stitch forward, back stitch, and then come up to the zipper, but not through it, just right at where that top stitch seam starts. Put your needle down and then stitch backwards and then forwards. Lift up the needle as far as it can go and then pull out and around to give yourself some slack. Just a little slack, see? You can fold this back down. You see we totally didn't go through the lining at all. It's still free and clear. You're going to take the other lining piece and you're going to fold it back and you can expose that little seam right here and that's where we had done the top stitch. Line up at a quarter inch. Again, you might have to tug on to get the, uh, the get the gusset to line up correctly. So I just so I'm going I'm to put a clip at the bottom here just to hold it in place while I'm doing this. Slide your work underneath. Press your foot still up, and take your needle and line it right at the seam for the top stitch, and put it halfway down. Lower your presser foot. Stitch forward two, back two, and then stitch all the way to the end and back stitch again. <clears throat> okay, that was a lot. So, but you see, like aside from this one stitch here, which we can free, you are, you have completely free lining and the exterior is also completely free. And you just, you know, snip that if you want, leave it. So the zipper is exposed here. You have to be careful when working with this because you don't want your zipper head to slide through. So, and, and even if you're working with a stopped zipper, it can kind of make it a little annoying, but since I have zipper tape, I have to be really aware of where it is. So I've left my zipper head in the middle. This is going to get stitched up later when we top stitch the gusset at the very end. I'll go through that. So let's do the other end of the gusset. Again, folding the lining out of the way line up at a quarter inch, stitch back stitch, and stitch up to, and you may need to like manually pull on that, stitch up to the top stitching, and then back stitch. Pull up and away, just to give yourself some slack, and move the other piece of lining back and out of the way. I'm gonna move that clip so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna put my needle right in where that fold is. I wanna get it as close to that top stitch as I can. Forward, backward, and then forward, backward, and sew that down. All right, and so that's the exterior gusset. Now let's do the same thing, but for the lining. All right, now we're gonna come back to the work area and we're gonna grab our, uh, the lining for the bottom gusset, piece H, and we're gonna flip it over so right sides are together. We're gonna clip it down, just as we did for the exterior. End to end. And here's where, like, sometimes you, can, you, you gotta pull on it, but it's just this end right here, the, ec the front part of the pocket is just such a tight fit. It's so tight, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> so then we go up here and do it on the other side as well. Sorry if you can hear power tools in the background. That's my neighbor. He loves power tools. All right, now we go back to the machine with our wonderful seesaw. All right, back at the machine. You're gonna have the exterior side facing up so you can actually see where you're stitching. You're gonna slide that over, just fold that over so it's out of the way and exposes the lining portion here. You're gonna put that up under the machine and just as we did before, 
back stitch and stitch up to, but not through. And you may find you've got a little bulk here. So I'm hand cranking. And then out and over, just to give yourself wiggle room. Move the exterior pieces out of the way to expose the top stitching. And then put your needle down. I'm just gonna do this number here. And yeah, I might have to wiggle it around a bit just to get it seated correctly, but. There we go. All right, I'm actually gonna free that stitch there so I don't have it in the way. I should have done that with the exterior too. Now I got it. <laughs> On the other side, we're gonna fold this down and we're gonna stitch quarter inch and backward. Loosen it up, come out and around. Fold this back. There you go. All right, and that, oh, looks like my loopy thread got stuck. I'm gonna have to pull on that. Oh no. Okay, I'll clip it away. There we go. <laughs> And that's it. And now we go back and work on this uh, to get the front panel attached. All right, back at the table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, fairly long. Um, you could trim it, but I would never trim up to the gusset fabric. I would always leave a little bit of a tail. Um, you're going to take this and you're going to flip it so it's right side out. So what you should have is a perfectly round little gusset area. So, and again, don't worry about this and don't top stitch it yet. This is like one of the last steps that you need to do with this particular piece. So we're just gonna leave it like that, but leave, leave your zipper head up here so you don't lose it. Um, you could, because I've left enough uh, little leeway at the bottom, I could fix it if I needed to. Um, but this is what your zipper gusset should look like now. Okay, so, um, but one thing I would actually suggest before we actually cut off is if you have a domestic machine, um, it does help to take this and kind of trim away just right here. If I could even cut it, there we go. Trim away only a little bit of the fabric right here on the end on your longer edge. And the reason I say to do that is because that's the part that's gonna get attached to the bag and it'll make your life so much easier if you do that um, because it does reduce the bulk. So again, on this longer edge, the one that should be about an inch tall now, um, this is the part that's gonna end up being sewn to the bag. So you're gonna take each of those sides and just trim them down just a smidge and that'll definitely reduce the bulk. Awesome. And you don't have to do it on the other side. The pattern does say to, but you don't really have to. Okay, so, so now flip it back out <laughs> so it's right side out and identify the front of the bag. So when you're looking at this, the front of the bag is going to be that smaller piece. This should be about three quarters of an inch tall now or wide if you're facing this way. So it's your shorter side. Um, you're gonna take the front piece like this, and you're going to use the, the, um, the middle markers that you had made initially when we started the 3D pocket steps, and you're going to put right sides together. So in actuality, uh, what we should do is flip this <laughs> like this. <laughs> It'll probably be a little easier. And we're gonna take, we're gonna start at the bottom so the bottom center, line them up. Oh, and I left my clips at the other machine. Again, it's a bad habit. You should watch me stream. It's even worse. Okay, so we'll line those up. Now I like 
to stitch the pocket down gusset side. So I'm gonna put my clips facing out this way. And what you do is you work your way up either side. to attach this front panel piece. And you get to the, and we're, we're only doing little quarter inch seams, so you won't have to worry too, too much about wrinkling or puckering in, the, in these little round corner areas. Flip that around. So, but I see it helps to kind of grab that gusset and kind of do this number with your thumbs to get, to get it laid down where I need it and then put additional clips because you can never have enough clips with this stuff, I swear. All right, when you get to the gusset, pull on it because you don't want to, I mean, not pull on it so tight you can rip it, but pull it so that it's, it's laying, it's a flat seam and fold the seam allowance down and then put a clip right on top of that bugger. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna put like one more little clip over here and flip this one around. I'm gonna tug on that and fold it down, downward. And then before you do anything else, just look it over and make sure that these clips are lined up. Because one of the things you don't want to happen is you don't want your pocket to be kind of, the gusset to be kind of catty cornered. Um, so you wanna look at it, hold it up, um, stare at it intently uh, and make sure that it looks the way that, that you want. Um, and we are lined up and that's why you start at the bottom center and just work your way around is to ensure you get that alignment. And then what we can do is we can just take clips and go all the rest of the way around up at the top just to get this kind of sealed off. Now I find it helps once you've done a couple of these to get up top to go ahead, fold that lining out of the way, kind of like over. So it's, it's, you, it's exposed and I don't accidentally stitch through it. And then line up my center seams at the top. Put a clip right there and that'll hold it. So that'll make it a little easier on me. And you can see it's kind of naturally making the shape where it needs to for making uh, that, the little corner there. Right, and same thing over here. Just go ahead and get that clipped down. Make sure you don't have any little pinches or puckers. You really shouldn't, but if everything was cut correctly. I don't think that's enough clips. What do you think? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the machine we're gonna make sure that the, the lining is out of the way and we're gonna stitch it from the gusset side up. So this is how it looks right now. This is the pocket panel, the back of it. You're gonna flip it over and sew it this way. I find it a lot easier to work around those corners um, and to ensure that you don't have puckering if you do that. So that's what we're gonna do. But it, I wanna show that now because it's kind of hard to see when you're sitting at the machine um, how I have it oriented. So let's go do that part. All right, back at the machine, make sure that you are at a regular stitch length. And I actually am gonna start from the bottom center. So we'll just, I've got so many clips. We're just gonna start right there at the bottom center, quarter inch seam allowance, please no more than that or you'll hate yourself. Stitch forward, backward, and then you're gonna stitch all the way around very carefully, ensuring that you're watching where everything is lined up Use your fingers to hold everything down, but be careful, don't sew through your fingers, that hurts. All right, that's like the tightest spot, at least along the bottom. When you get up at the top, it's gonna be a whole heck of a lot worse. Make sure the seam allowance is still facing down. Some machines will wanna try to push it upward, don't let it. Now, here's a part, even with extending this through testing, coming up around this corner in the top ledge where the zipper is, is really tight. So what you're gonna see me do is kind of like do this catty corner work um, with the foot and, and the fabric uh, pieces that I have here. Um, if you use a zipper foot, it's a lot easier. So actually what I will do now, let me backstitch this. 
and I'm gonna put a zipper foot on. Now, if you have an industrial machine and you don't have a zipper foot, that's fine. It's not a requirement, um, but I wanna make sure that people see that this actually isn't that scary uh, to attach. So if, you're, you know, if you've got a domestic machine, you're not gonna run into this problem like at all. So let's do that. Okay, so now I have the zipper foot, so I have a little more clearance. So again, since we're gonna start that stitch over again, I need to back stitch. So we're gonna start that all over again, which is right there. And keeping it a quarter an inch away from the edge, I'm gonna just come up through here and I'm gonna remove that guy and just hold this taunt where it needs to go. There, you can see it being a lot easier because if you have the other half of the foot here, it's gonna hit that top stitch seam. It makes it a little difficult to do. And honestly, this is the only part of the pattern that's super annoying. Uh, it, honestly, like I, even I can say that and it's my pattern. All right, but once you make it around these top corners, it's really not too bad and it's free sailing. So, ha ha. Okay, and coming around the other end, keeping it a quarter inch away. And I tend to just come in here and pull that pocket panel in right there. All right. And right here. Awesome. And now you're basically in the clear. It's only that top area that's kind of a pain in the bottom. And again, and you gotta take it slowly. You don't wanna have any wrinkles, but you see how I can watch it. I know that the gusset is free and clear of wrinkles, and I know the bottom of the, the, the panel on the bag is also free and clear of wrinkles because I, uh, I could see it clearly and it was laying flat. All right, so now let's do the lining part. All right, this part, when you're back at the table, what you're gonna do is everything is going to be folded basically inside out. And so you've got this free and clear gusset here. You've got the front panel uh, exterior right side facing up at you, all right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull up this gusset lining so it's laying like that. This is a side you wanna to attach to. So twist this around such that it is laying like this, all right? I'm gonna do that again because I wanna make sure that you've picked up on it because it's a little, it's a little tricky, all right? Because this is the side that we wanna to attach to. So basically this side is gonna be flipped up like that and so you need to be able to access the other side. And so you're gonna lay it on top like that, just pull it away, free and clear of the bottom exterior's gusset and fold it over like that. So now you can very clearly access this, this exterior lip for the lining. All right, so you're gonna take your lining piece and you're gonna put it right sides together. Again, this is the side you wanna attach to. Matching up and clipping in place that bottom center seam. Well, not seam, marking. <laughs> and then Fan your way outward on either side, just like we did with the exterior piece. I'm just gonna flip it around so it's a little easier to demonstrate. And I'm just gonna kinda work this up such I can easily get in here and pop a clip right there in that little corner. Same thing over here. There we go, and up on this side. And here's where it gets a little funky. You're gonna wanna push the other gusset areas down just to get out of your way. It's a little weird looking, but ultimately the end, this becomes your hole for turning. Rah, waka, waka. So, so that's why you have to do it this way. And just like you did with the exterior, make sure that the seam allowance right there at the, the gusset seam by the zipper end 
is facing downward. Come up on this side too. Actually pull on it a bit just to make sure it's laying pretty darn flat. And then once again, I like to just, just gently fold and make sure that it's, they're, they're lined up. And they are, so we're not going to do a whole lot with that. So now what we need to do, you're going to have to really push the zipper down. And if you want, it can be a little easier just to unzip it a little bit, at least around those corners. So you can like kind of squish this down and out of the way. Make your life a little easier. And line up right sides together once again the top center and clip that into place. So that'll kind of just make it nice and stable as you work your way around. And now come around the top edges to meet where the gusset clip is located. Like so. Again, the zipper <laughs> is a little annoying, but you can like fold it toward the, the inside. You can like munge it to squish it out of the way if you need to. Helps to put the clips in the right direction. I'm so professional. Okay. And again, I'm gonna come back in here and make this look a little nicer. Just like so. Nice and smooth. Like butter. And down the side too. It's just it gets so tight up here. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get it exactly how you want it. So you're just gonna have to kind of muddle with it a bit to work it to where it needs to go. Okay, great. So this is what it should look like. Here's the, here's the exterior pocket panel. And then here's the lining pocket panel. And then you should have an opening at the bottom between the gussets. And that's how you're going to flip it right side out. So let's go over and we're going to sew this. But before we go over there, I am going to warn you once again, you're going to stitch down from the gusset side. I would highly advise using a zipper foot um, just so you have a little more wiggle room here. Um, if you can't, you will probably end up sewing a little catty cornered just around all of this. This is the zipper right here. Um, and it, it's a top stitch and it can be a little funky right there. Um, but I assure you, you have enough fabric to work with to do this correctly. All right. So now we're going to start at the bottom center just because it's the easiest place to start. And we're going to go forward and backward. And just stitching around. Ensuring we don't have any wrinkles. Okay. And move everything out of the way if you need to. Don't be afraid to squish things. You absolutely can. It won't, it won't warp it or make it bad in any way. But I think you can see now why I said don't use like vinyl in the pattern. Like I absolutely called out. Please don't use vinyl with this. I am not going to be responsible for your medical care or your mental capacity after you have done so. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult. All right, so this part doesn't want to, f doesn't want to work with me. So I'm gonna like forcibly hold it down with a finger. There we go. But sometimes it's just really hard because it just wants, the machine just wants to tug on it and pull it certain ways. So you kind of just have to really work with that fabric. And again, if you used waterproof canvas for your lining, um, use snips and just snip away like an eighth of an inch, just a tiny, tiny little snip in it and it'll give you enough give to like work it around those corners. Um, but I, I just, I don't think it's worth the fuss. Okay, and going around the next corner there, and you're basically in the clear at this point. That was, that was the hard part. <laughs> and you see a zipper foot made that a lot easier. If you don't use a zipper foot, um, then again, you're just gonna have to, you know, <laughs> drink. <laughs> just drink a lot. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it without a zipper foot. Okay, 
from coming up at the other end. Seal that bad boy up. And you're done with that. So here comes the fun part. All right, now back at the table. I'm gonna strongly suggest that you very carefully trim away a little bit of the excess on these pockets. And again, that's mostly because you just don't want a lot of bulk in there, especially when you go to top stitch this, which is what we're gonna be doing just after we do this part. So we're just gonna trim away any of the excess very carefully. And I usually put another finger underneath just so I can make sure I'm not cutting accidentally through anything else. Uh, I accidentally cut a hole in a almost finished bag once because I wasn't paying enough attention. Uh, and that is very scary. It gets scary when you get to like a, the gusset end there and you're like, oh, what am I cutting through? So we're just gonna cut all the way around and we're gonna do the same thing to the exterior side and its seam as well. Uh, and again, and that just reduces the bulk for you. All right, now that you have everything trimmed up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the whole piece and through that opening in the bottom, you're gonna push everything right side out. Go ahead and, and gently push out your corners. Use the point turner if you need to, to kind of smooth out those corners and to get everything turned and looking nicely. It's kind of like birthing a bag, only with a giant gaping hole on one end. Again, I like to just come in here with a point turner, get everything looking nice. All right, and it helps at this point, go ahead and tuck everything in there. Everything, everything, everything. Any stray threads, get them out of there. We don't need them. Go ahead and zip up the zipper gusset. But again, if you don't have a stopper here, stop a little further away. I'm paranoid about that. I had a problem once. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna flip it. So now it's technically inside out, only with one giant gaping hole. Smooth out the bottom. And again, this is like an optional step inside the pattern, but I do advise that you, you take this precaution. You're gonna top stitch just about an eighth to a quarter inch away from this seam right here where you attached the pocket. And the reason you're going to do that is because it then stitches the front, the front panel to the back panel and ensures that it's not like a loose pocket on the inside because you don't really have enough wiggle room to sew the lining tighter, which is normally what you would do with a bag. So we're gonna take a top stitch uh, and go around the outside of the bag here. Just pull and tug on the fabric as you're moving around the machine. And once you flip it right side out, it'll look really nice. Now, what I will say about this is you can't really see what's going on on the underside. So if you care about what the stitching looks like on the underside, you're gonna need to be very careful because it's really hard to see what's going on. All right, so let's go do that top stitch. I've moved back to using a regular stitch foot. Um, so I'm not, I'm not using anything super special at this point. Um, and I'm going to take my bag and just gently push it up underneath. And it might be a little difficult for you guys to watch what I'm doing, but I'm basically just gonna stitch right along the edge there. And as I go around, I'm gonna be tugging and pulling on the fabric to make sure it's nice and taut where I'm stitching. So I'm gonna do that top stitch right on the inside here um, as I go around. I'll try to make it visible for you, but ultimately I want the bag to look nice. <laughs> so I'm just gonna back stitch there and start that top stitch going around and around and around. Pulling on that fabric. Just make sure it looks nice. We want it to look nice, not like crap. This is especially important if the thread that you're using is a contrast thread. Now, here we're coming up in the zipper head and I have a zipper that's got a nice little head that likes to wobble around a lot and get in the way. I'm actually gonna push it underneath and to the other side so it's out of my way. Uh, I don't wanna accidentally stitch over that. So, continuing my top stitch around. Technically, this also gets covered by the flap. So if you do make it look a little wonky, don't worry, the flap will save you. It's 
just a little hard. Get, again, the, those round corners can really get you, so just be very careful. Having good lighting helps, too. Oh, I ran out of bobbin thread. No! Okay, hold on. Okay, now I'm back with, <laughs> with a bobbin. Okay, so I definitely lost bobbin wars. All right, so I'm gonna just put my needle back down about where I had the line before and stitch forward and back and start over again. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> okay. People, make sure to check your bobbins before you get started on a project, eh? Okay, and that's corner a little tight, a little tight, but you can do it. Coming back around, it might be easier if I'm not trying too hard to to make a good camera angle, but I'm just stitching right along that top edge. And I'm coming to the end and I'm gonna back stitch to finish it. All right, and then that's done. Now that you've finished this piece, what you're gonna do is keep it laying flat like this, but now we need to close off the zipper areas. If you recall, we left those open when we attached the bottom gusset pieces. We're gonna take this and come in from the back of the machine and lift your presser foot as high as it can go and position the needle by pulling it about halfway down into the fabric right where the seam starts not the top stitch, but the actual seam. And you're gonna top stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of this, this seam here. All right, make sure that your gusset pieces are lined up on the other end as well. So we're gonna stitch forward and back and then go all the way to the end. And that closes up your zipper and gives you a nice little top stitch. And this trick you couldn't do um, with a bag, unfortunately, that has a zipper gusset because um, it, the, the only reason this works for us is because one end is wide open. All right, so we're gonna do the other side and we're gonna have to eyeball it from the opposite end. So we'll come in this way, make sure every, all your seams are facing downward and are lined up on the other end and get about a quarter inch away. Put your needle halfway down right into that seam where the front panel piece attached to the gusset. Stitch forward then back and then all the way across. And now everything will be closed off and you won't have to worry about the zipper head. And I can stop freaking out about the zipper head still being out there. <laughs> All right, so now we'll go back over to the table. When you're done, you can flip it so it's right side out. And this is your front 3D pocket. And you can see that top stitch really made this stay nice and taut on the inside. But then we have this loose raw edge. So this is all going to get stitched up very nicely when it's attached to the front main panel B. But in order to ensure that that is a possibility, what we're gonna do is we're going to you can either baste or zigzag around this edge. I'm gonna zigzag because I am using woven fabrics and I just want that extra touch of security. Just in case, you know, I goof the seam allowance or I don't fully enclose that seam when I double stitch it down. You should though, because you're, all, you're gonna fold this under, this whole edge is gonna get folded under a quarter inch and attached to the main bag. So really once you attach it you're going to stitch it at an eighth of an inch and then you're going to turn around and you're going to stitch it again at a quarter inch so a the pocket's not going to fall off and b it's <laughs> it's going to enclose that raw edge it's not really a thing that you need to be worried about but it does make it easier when you get to uh, the point of folding under that this raw edge to attach if you have this whole section kind of basted down or zigzagged off
Okay, so now we've got everything prepared for attaching to the main bag. So what you'll end up doing is folding under a quarter inch all the way around the edge of the bag um, of this piece, the 3D pocket piece, and then laying it down on top of piece B. So first off, take piece B just like this. And what we want to do is we want to fold it in half like so. Right, just a nice little finger press. And then take a ruler and mark the center. Mark the center straight down. That'll kind of nice and light. And that'll help you keep track of it. And the other thing you can do is you can just take your pattern piece that you had assembled and, and also just use that as a guide to go down and mark that center. So the pocket is gonna go one inch below this top straight edge here. So I'm gonna turn that to the side just so I can get a better feel for it. And just an inch below, I'm gonna mark with a chalk line where that's supposed to go. All right, so that's great and all. We know the center of it now, However, what do we need to do in order to actually put the pocket on there? So there is a guide that's on, that's on the pattern piece itself. It can be, unfortunately, <laughs> a little difficult to follow. Go me. So what I would actually advise is to grab the pattern piece for that front panel. Okay, so I'm gonna reach over and grab that. And I'm gonna center it on here, lined up to that top edge. And mind you, it's gonna be a quarter inch smaller, but what this is gonna allow me to do is to create a rectangle in which I know the pocket should live. So I, when I fold it and I pin it down, I know that it should be right along those lines, just inside, actually. So I've put a rectangle with chalk on the front panel piece B. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom center and I'm gonna line it up with that point there. So I'm gonna fold that under and in this step, I highly advise using pens. Clips aren't going to work because you're in the middle of a bag area. Um, so it's just gonna be a matter of lining things up correctly and pinning them down. And again, like this is one of those things where, where I'm like, please, please do not use vinyl. If you use vinyl, that's on you. I'm not paying your medical bills. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really nice, aren't I? And then take top center and fold it down just at the line and pin it in place. So it's kind of like quartering off, like if you're familiar with terminology for, um, for making uh, t-shirts, you have to quarter off your work. So now we can see where the gusset should go. And so we'll fold that under and just, I'm not used to having to lean back so much. <laughs> Usually I can see, and we're just inside that pocket line, just inside, it's just a guideline so we know it's straight. So when we're sewing, um, if things have shifted on us, we can still kind of hold it and don't have to like tape and glue things down, All right? So, so there you go. You put one there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and undo the zipper so I can kind of push and keep this thing sitting straight. And then the other side on the gusset and just lay it down and pin it in place. I'm not pinning through that gusset. That is a really thick seam. So I'm not going to pin through it, I'm going to pin around it. So I'm going either top or bottom side on it. Then you can kind of see how it's laid out and then close it again. And it's kind of it's kind of hard to get a feel for the if it's crooked or not based on how it's sitting right now. So go around the edge and pin the rest of it up and then we'll take a look at it and see um, how it's laid out and we can tell if it's gonna be crooked and need to make adjustments. But the idea is to try to make as few 
uh, pens as possible um, so you don't end up in a spot where you, uh, you have to remove literally everything that you've done after finding out that it's a little crooked. So, um, so only, only do minimal pens at the very beginning. Get a feel for it and see if, if, if it looks like it's gonna be crooked and, and then place the rest down after you've confirmed it. So now I'm gonna line it up and I'm just gonna pull in this. See, this, I, like, I like to use clips, but you can't in this case. So I'm gonna kind of pull on it a bit just to lay it flat and look at it. And I feel like the side of the pocket is kind of leaning down a bit. So all I'm gonna do is go up this side and kind of rework things. I left this side open and unpinned. Um, just to get it lined up correctly. So now we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna start taking some of these pins out on this side and just uh, work it a bit more so that it's not so crooked looking. You're just gonna stick your pins in there and I'm gonna pull, it out, pull them out actually and just kinda reseat this a little. So it just kinda needs to go a little higher up this way to give it that appearance that is now sitting higher. So, and the bottom center could probably come up a smidge. Just like that. All right. I like, this is the only annoying part of the pattern. <laughs> Everything else is fantastic. <laughs> but this part is a little crap. Sorry. Okay. That looks a lot nicer. Whoop, helps if you've put the pen all the way through the bag. There, okay, boop. And now holding it taunt again, I can look at it and be like, hmm, is it crooked? Is it looking all right? It's definitely looking great up top. So yeah, so it's looking good. So we'll pen the rest. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the machine and we're gonna sew all the way around two times. Once is gonna be an eighth of an inch and that's gonna tack it on. And then a second time a quarter inch away from the edge. And what that is going to do is that's going to enclose those raw edges so they're not visible. Okay, coming back over to the machine, you're gonna go to the bottom center of that 3D pocket once again. Make sure your machine is sitting at a uh, top stitch length and if you need to go ahead and remove that first pen and what you're going to do is right at right at the edge eighth of an inch away you're going to st start your stitch and back stitch and then slowly work your way around so that you can stitch this down ensuring that you catch that raw edge, it should be under. And so if you didn't pin liberally around the bag, now is the time to just ensure that you um, catch that seam as you're working around and go slowly. You see my machine has some issues with going too fast, so. There we go, okay. And then if, if you're working on a domestic machine and you're coming up to the stitch here, Highly recommend increase your stitch length temporarily. You can also steam this. You can use a tailor's clacker to hammer this down um, or even a rubber mallet. Um, but part of why we trimmed this down initially when we did this gusset seam was so you wouldn't have issues here. And so the other thing is like you could hand crank it. Like I'm on an industrial machine and I'm, I don't need to hand crank it. So I'm just going along with minding my own business. So, um, but that might be an option that you'd have to consider if you are trying to make this bag on a domestic machine. And again, like I said, very early on in the project when we started that it is designed to work for a domestic machine and testers were testing this pattern who were using domestic machines. Actually, I had absolute beginners who were testing it. Sorry, I didn't really, I didn't really attach this very well up here. So I'm trying to work my way around it without kind of losing the placement of it. I'm gonna kind of pull things this way and fold it under just the amount that I need. There we go, that looks good. OK, 
carefully slide out your pens. Don't sew through them. Never sew through a pen. Pivot if you have to. I just had to. There's no shame in needing to pivot, unless it's a couch. Again, we're coming up on that other gusset. Now this one seems pretty thick. I'm just gonna hammer it over it because I have an industrial. Okay, we're coming around that last rounded corner. Just making sure everything is nice and tucked in and laying correctly. Stitch along that eighth of an inch and close it up. Now you're going to take that stitch and you're going to clip it real good because we're done with that. Done, done, done. However, we're not done with the bag. Now you need to do a quarter inch. So now you're going to go back around this whole thing. But before you do that, I, I recommend go ahead and giving it a good look now that you don't have pens in the way and just make sure it's not crooked or, or looking, a little, looking a little misplaced because you can still go back over it and fix it at this point if you need to. Um, but this is looking good so we're not gonna worry about it. So we're gonna go back down. Same starting spot only now we're a quarter inch away. And you're gonna top stitch it again going all the way around just as you did before. Only now you don't have to worry about the pens or anything else getting in the way. All right, and then we're done with that. Make sure to get the needle all the way out the way it's supposed to. Trim up your seams. And Bob's your uncle. All right, now that we have the whole front bottom panel assembled as well as the piece A assembled with its main pocket, we're gonna reach around, grab that flap again. And what you wanna do is you wanna mark the center and this thing should be a good six inches wide after you were done. So it's really easy to just like mark that center point. You would mark the center here when you would put the pocket on initially. So I usually just snap the pocket, go ahead and snap, snap it right into place and then take this and line up and you want, again, the flap to be right side up. So we're putting wrong side to right side in this case, which is a little different. And we're going to clip that down, just like so. I'm gonna slide that over. I want that to be right there on that edge. And then I'm gonna put a couple more in here because I don't want this thing shifting at all. I want it to be nice and even flush with that edge, okay? So look it over and make sure that everything looks nice and even, nothing is crooked looking, so you should be good. And that's what I mean, it's like even if the pocket is a little bit crooked, just a little, the flap kind of covers that mistake. <laughs> so don't worry, you're in good hands, all right? So now you've got that set up. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take piece A with its pocket already assembled and you're gonna take it and flip it. Oops. <laughs> Whoop. You're gonna flip it upside down like this so that you're exposing the right side and you're gonna put right side to right side. And you see how we've marked the middle still. So we're gonna take that and line it up with the middle and clip it down. Now, if you want, before you get to this step, you can also baste it, baste the flap down into place and not have to worry about it shifting on you. Um, the, I approach this kind of like the zippers. It's totally up to you. Um, it's not a required step. Line everything up. Keep clipping. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the machine and you're gonna stitch all along this edge, all the way across a half an inch. Now's where we're moving to a half inch seam allowance because we're in our final stages. Don't be afraid to squish all of this down. It's totally fine. If you can detect when you get to the edge of your flap, and you might wanna even take something and mark where the edge is actually at, back stitch just to secure it in place. So back at your machine, we're gonna go back to a regular stitch length because we're not top stitching, not yet. 
half inch seam allowance, start that stitch, go backwards to reinforce and keep going. Now I'm coming up on the part where I marked where the flap is and I get, you notice I'm keeping the pocket out, as out of the way as I can. It's not going to be in the stitch area, but it's very close. When we go over that line, we're going to back stitch, and that's just to ensure that that area is nicely secured. Sometimes people like to pull up on a messenger style bag by its flap, and you'll find that that is a very helpful thing to reinforce. And stitch all the way down, all the way to the end of the flap area, back stitch over that flap seam, and then go all the way to the end where you'll backstitch again. I'm sensing the same. All right, and we're done with that part. All right, now you're gonna take all of this and flip it up. Leave the pocket lining out of the way. If you need to, you can pin it down right here. You want the seam allowance on the back to be facing up, and here's why we don't trim any of that away. We want to use it to anchor this so that it faces upright and doesn't do this number automatically all of the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna top stitch right along the edge here about a quarter inch away and that's gonna keep that seam allowance pressed down and it'll ensure the flap and all of this is sitting correctly. So again, don't trim that flap away. Don't trim any of this. You're gonna be using it as an anchor. So let's go over and top stitch that now. Okay, at the machine, set it to a top stitch length and gently put it under and making sure that the seam allowance is facing upward toward the top of piece A. We're gonna start stitching about quarter inch away from the edge. And if you need to, reach up underneath and just hold and pull down the seam allowance to make sure that it stays down and facing upward, okay? And again, keeping the pocket out of the way so you don't accidentally close it. That's one heck of a thing to figure out at the end. Coming to the very end of the stitch here, I'm gonna back stitch that, and then you're done. Okay, now we've finished everything by assembling the main piece A. But there's one thing that remains before we can actually assemble the whole thing. And that's going back to the very beginning and grabbing our smaller thigh strap connectors. There is a guide that is available on the pattern piece itself. And you can use it to kind of figure out where it needs to go. I'm just gonna overlay it right here and take this guy and kind of slide it where it needs to go and clip it into place. Just like that. So clip that down. I'm gonna grab one more clip and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'll flip this around so it's a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. So again, I'm gonna flip it over this way, or actually this way, <laughs> kind of figure out where I need to go. Line up the pattern piece. And then I can see that the thigh strap connector is supposed to be right there. I'm just gonna slide it in right at that point. You can just mark on here where it needs to go to. Or you can cut out that whole section as well. Whatever works. Now, flip it around, observe it, make sure that it looks nice and evenly placed. They should be perfectly aligned with the pattern pieces. And that is ready to go. Now we're ready for final assembly. So you're gonna take the back piece that you've had set aside this whole time, the one with the foam, and you're gonna flip it over so it's gonna be right sides together. And this looks a little awkward. Squish, just squish everything. <laughs> I always start at the, uh, the top right and top left little corners here or not really corners, these curved edges. It's just, it's a very uh, distinctive look. And so it's easy for me to kind of see where I am going with it. And then go around the edge and place everything together. When you get to the bottom, what you're going to do is you're gonna leave a hole big enough for turning right at the bottom. Now, 
Just as a note, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you like bias binding or you chose uh, to do this with a vinyl or a leather and really don't want to flip it right side out, bias binding is totally fine. I'll, it looks more utility, utility, I guess, if you do it that way. Um, so uh, be my guest. So I'm gonna actually just follow straight up what I wrote in the pattern directions. Um, and if you deviate from it, uh, that is A-OK -okay by me. Make sure your hole is big enough for turning. If you just leave this tiny hole, it's not gonna really be all that helpful and you're probably gonna wanna hurt somebody at the end of the day. So birthing really shouldn't be that close to actual birthing, just as a FYI. So, and all of this is going to get tucked under and top stitched anyway, so it won't look weird to have that open and you won't have to slip stitch anything. So don't be afraid to leave additional room if you need to adjust at all. So once you're done clipping everything into place, you're gonna go back to the sewing machine and you're gonna stitch all the way around the edge, leaving this hole open for turning. Okay, now we're at the machine. So what we're gonna do, and you can keep the pocket lining out of the way as you're doing this. You don't wanna accidentally tack it down to the wrong end. Go ahead and start at one end of your opening and you're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. Half inch for this. Make sure that your machine is at a normal stitch length because the previous time we were at the machine, we were top stitching. You don't wanna do a top stitch. This is a construction stitch. And you're just gonna go around the edge and if you use vinyl for your strap connectors, please don't back stitch on them. They're gonna be just fine. And the ones around the thighs really aren't load bearing, which is why they're attached the way that they are. Now, if you need to, you can fold, push up the bag a little bit and just squish it into place so that you get everything where it needs to be. Stitch all the way around the edge, continuing that half inch seam allowance and keeping the pocket out of the way and then you'll be done. When you get to the end, make sure to back stitch over the hole at the opening so that uh, so it, it doesn't pop and break loose while you're trying to flip it right side out. And we're done, and now we're gonna move back over to the work table. So now we've come back over here, we've sewn all the way around the edge, and what we need to do at this point is to trim away about a quarter of an inch around all of this, except for this hole. You wanna have enough of that so when you turn it and top stitch it, that you can actually top stitch a quarter, edge, a quarter inch away from the edge. And if you shave this down to a quarter inch, you're not gonna catch that seam. So what you do is you kinda of taper away from the edge, like that, and cut around the edge, just getting rid of all that. Now if you zigzagged over the uh, over the, to, to attach your foam, uh, that's gonna go away now, but that's, that's fine. And it is fine for the foam to be within the seam allowance, especially for this kind of bag, um, because it's, it's not really, it's gonna get clamped down and reduce the bulk just by act of the final top stitching. So you won't have to worry about that at all. So we're gonna go around, continue to go around until you get to the bottom, and then you're going to taper it again and cut off the excess, uh, but again, leaving the opening, the bottom opening alone, uh, because you really don't, you're, you're gonna want that extra uh, to kind of hold on to when you turn that under after the bag has been birthed. Now comes the fun part of birthing the bag. Also, hello, I'm still here. I'm just not walking hands. So you're gonna reach through and you're gonna start to go through this hole using your thumbs to push out. And the only reason I'm not in the top work camera right now is because you need to see the look on my face <laughs> when I'm birthing this bag. It's really not that bad. It, it, I used all uh, fabric for this and so it shouldn't be too bad. When I've used um, vinyl for the flap, Sometimes that can get a little iffy. But again, it's kind of like a reverse of putting a sock or pantyhose on. You have to just kind of push outward with your thumbs. Don't reach in there and drag it. You could stretch out the flap, you could pop a seam, you could rip a zipper wide open. So don't do that. Just push through and very patiently uh, get to uh, the bag being fully birthed. I usually like once the pocket is out, once the flap is out there, it's not that bad. It really isn't too bad. 
but it is a messy ordeal. So, so you just got to tug on it a little bit. I'm just gonna pull just a smidge. You're not really supposed to pull on it, but sometimes you do just to like kind of get it going. Kind of get, get, get it flicked all right good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, what are we doing? I'm making it look terrible. I'm really horrible at marketing my own patterns. But it is what it is. All bags are this bad, dang it. All bags. <laughs> okay. Whew. Whew. Almost got it all. So I can actually reach up from the other side now to kind of pull the rest through. So everything is in, is flipped right side out. Whew. So let me switch to the other camera so I can show you what I do. Well, that there looks like a hot mess. Look at that. Hot mess. All right. So I'm going to reach in there and I'm just going to start. So the flap is out. I'm just going to kind of push up from the inside to get those top little rounded corners pushed outward as much as I can with my fingers. Even like scoop in and kind of flop them out there. Then I'm going to go in with a point turner. If you don't have one of these, by the way, and I've mentioned this quite a bit, you can get this at any craft store and they're really cheap. But if you don't have one, right the second while you're trying to do the bag, um, what you can do is uh, use uh, the eraser side of a pencil. That helps a lot. Um, poster board, anything. The back of a spoon, a spoon. Don't use a knife. That's kind of, I hope that's common sense. Okay, and same thing at the bottom. Don't assume that just because those little doodads are hanging out that everything's fine. Just go ahead and, and scrape around the bottom as well. And all along that side seam, all along the side seam, just kind of push on it to get everything folded right side out. Okay. Wow, still looks like a hot mess when it's flipped like that. It's fine though. <laughs> it's just a little wrinkly. Just a little. But see how puffy it looks? We're going to end up top stitching all the way around. So for the hole here at the bottom, what you need to do is get your clips off of the machine where I am constantly in a bad habit of leaving them. You're going to fold this hole under a quarter inch. Well, technically, a ha it folded under a half inch, sorry. Half inch, just fold it under itself and clip it down in place. Clip or pen. I mean, some of you might be, might still be using pens. I'm not judging much. I'm just gonna tuck those raw ends under against themselves and that'll, That'll hold that down enough so that when you go to sew the top stitch, it'll catch all of that. Fold that down a little more right there, a little more along this end here. Finger press it if you need to. You can if you want steam a little bit as well. Um, I just don't normally uh, hit the iron until the very end of the bag being made um, because I want to steam the whole thing. All right, and that marks the beginning of where I'm going to start doing that top stitch. So let's head over to the machine and do that. Actually, one quick thing I meant to mention before going over to top stitch all the way around, Open up that main zipper compartment and push the, um, the zipper pocket lining down and out to the side. When you top stitch, it's going to catch the side seam of it and kind of hold it in place. Um, so that's really important to note um, because it keeps it from kind of like flopping around. The same issue, same reason I had it, um, the pocket and the flap be so flush to the edge was so it would catch it. So you'll also want to try to catch that as you were uh, going, going around the machine and top stitching and that, that should be great and fine and good in the world. <laughs> All right, over at the machine, once again, starting out right where the opening of the hole would begin, you're gonna stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. 
and that's going to be your top stitch. Also make sure that your machine is at a top stitch length. So keeping that quarter inch, go around the bottom of the bag. This will first close up the hole and then as you go around, you're going to be simply locking everything down into place, double stitching over your thigh straps to really make them secure. And also flattening those side seams where you had that foam. So that won't be kind of bulky and causing issues. And make sure as you're going around that you fold the back to the back because it may be trying to kind of roll its way to the front of your work. If you come around to the bottom and you're stitching around that last little thigh strap connector, make sure that everything is lined up, go slowly, and then back stitch in order to finish. And that is it for the main part of the bag. All right, so you've top stitched all the way around. You've closed up that bottom hole uh, after turning. And now what you need to do with the final step for the main bag, aside from strapping, is going to be attaching those waist belt connectors. So this is the belt connectors you created at the very beginning of this whole project. And you can use the guide that's available um, on it or you can actually just eyeball it. Um, I, I personally just eyeball where I want them to go. Um, again, with the double-sided tape, I take two small strips of double-sided tape and I say to put them right along the back. And what that's gonna do is hold it down for you um, while you are trying to sew it down. So just peel off that paper like that. And I'm, again, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just gonna put it right about there. You really want it center and angled such that it's, it's coming out from this end. Um, and the hook will go in for the belt around the D-ring. Now, same thing here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that double-sided tape. Again, I will put a link for that in the description of the video below so that you can purchase some if you want. You can use glue if you don't have any. And then eyeballing once again, just kind of setting it down. Hold it up and look at it. Make sure it looks the way that you want it to. Um, I, I like the way these look. I think, I think that they're, they're great and they're evenly placed. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch them down. All right, going back to a top stitch length, if you somehow ended up uh, not on a top stitch length, start from the bottom corner. So if you're facing up, you wanna, you wanna start right here on this bottom left corner of the connector. And that's because you don't want it to come loose. If you're not gonna do rivets at the end, then you wanna make sure that you can do that. Um, now, I am using a very strong marine vinyl. I am gonna backstitch. If you're using a lighter vinyl, I advise not backstitching and just pulling it through at the end and tying it off. Um, so I'm gonna start here at the bottom. And I'm gonna work my way just about at the D ring. And I'm gonna put my needle down lift my presser foot and pivot as we've done so many times before in this project. And then I'm gonna stitch slowly across right there and pivot my work again and go slowly down to the bottom, slowly. Okay, I think that was slow. I kinda gotta squish the bag again, so squish. It's getting very good at being squished. And then you may find that you need to manually eyeball this last stitch to get it so it's lined up. <laughs> Perfect. And then pivot your work again and lock it into place. So that was one of them. Now we need to do the other. Okay, so that's locked into place. Okay, so now we'll come back to the other side with the other connector, again, starting in the lower corner. It's like having trouble moving my table is like not long enough for this. Ah, I gotta squish, squish the bag. Okay, all right, starting down at the bottom, 
Stitch up, back, and then up, just as close as you can get to that day ring. And then pivot. You may find you have to manually eyeball where you want to put it. And then pivot. And then stitch. And eyeball. So you can line up correctly. Pivot. And then finish. And you're done. Now that you're done with the exterior of the bag, you can move on to the straps. But one other thing, the pattern does call for rivets. You're supposed to put two rivets along here. You don't have to, however, I strongly recommend it given the amount of weight that can be carried by a bag such as this. Rivet installation, uh, for me, I use a press. You can actually just punch holes and use a hammer and uh, anvil. Um, but uh, we'll get to that part just after. So for the straps, I actually like to use nylon webbing. If you're using fabric straps uh, that you've made on your own, uh, I'm not covering that in this tutorial, but I do have other tutorials where I've done that in the past. So if you do make your own straps, you can start following from this point after you've had the straps made. So you're going to need your half inch strapping, your half inch hardware, and your one inch strapping and your one inch hardware. If you want, you can actually use the one inch straight through if you don't want to have a variance in hardware types for the thigh strap. Um, totally up to you. I'm doing this again to the specifications of the pattern. So what you're gonna do is you need 30 inches of the half inch webbing for the thigh belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut that out. So there's 20. And then another 10. And you're gonna cut that. Now if you're using webbing like I am, then you need to have a lighter or a candle so that you can melt the end. Otherwise it'll actually fray and fall apart. So we're just gonna melt it gently like that. And that's for the thigh strap. Now for the waist belt, there's a size guide that's available inside the pattern on page four. So if you look inside the pattern right there, you can actually see that there's a guide. Um, it is a very sized bag. On average, what you're gonna find is the, the strap length required is more like 45 inches, 50 inches. So, um, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut for 50 inches because you never know, somebody might want to do it as a crossbody bag. So we'll go with 50. So I'm going to measure up. There's 25. And another 25. And this also leaves wiggle room for attaching the strap connectors. So again, this is also nylon webbing. This is uh, Strapworks uh, seatbelt nylon. Very good, very strong stuff, but you still need to melt the ends. So we'll just do that real quick. Okay, now I'm gonna do this with the one inch strapping. You're gonna take your adjuster and you're gonna take one end of the strap and you're gonna put it up through one end of the adjustable piece. You're gonna take this end and then fold it down into and through the other end. So it should look like this. We're gonna stitch this part down. Give yourself plenty of room, of wiggle room, and you're gonna do a little box stitch right here. So let's go do that box stitch, and then at the camcorder view at the sewing machine, I'll show you what we do next. So at the machine, you're gonna to wanna to use your top stitch length. You can switch down to a smaller if you prefer for these kinds of things. Um, you're gonna take this, the adjuster, and put it underneath the foot and you're gonna stitch across and pivot and make a box. Not unlike when we also created the attachments for this belt. There 
There we go. Okay, and down. Okay, and then clip all that away. You can clean it up later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, now you're gonna take this piece here and actually, I'm gonna show you this on the other camera because I think it's a little more involved. Okay, this will be a better view for this. So you've got your adjuster. You've got like the wrong end of the adjuster up here where the fold is. You're gonna take your forefinger and your thumb and hold onto it. This is to make sure you don't twist it and pull all the way to the end. And, that, and, and this is how you want it to look, okay? So it's not twisted. Take one of your hooks and loop it through it with the hook facing outward, by the way, just like that. So now you've got a dangling hook at the end of it. You're gonna take this raw end and loop it up through that open end, just like that, and pull it through and then go down the other end. So then that's your adjustable strap. Now, this end is outward. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. When you put the other hook on, you want to make sure that you go in from the right side upright and then fold this under so that wrong side is wrong side. Otherwise you'll have like this raw edge peeking out at the end, even though you seam it off or you, you seal it off with a little bit of uh, fire, still you kind of want to keep your raw side, your wrong sides rather uh, like that. So all we're going to do now is stitch this part and then the belt is done and then it's onto the thigh strap. So once again, go ahead and put this underneath and stitch all the way around, going up a little and boxing it in. And the exact same technique is gonna be used for the thigh strap as well. And so what you're gonna find out is what we're basically gonna do is I'm gonna talk through this and kind of run through it very quickly in terms of the video. But essentially all you're gonna do is take everything and put it within the adjuster just like you did before with the belt strap. So we'll put this in to the middle and over and down and we're going to take that guy and we're going to stitch it down. And since this is such a smaller piece of fabric um, that I'm working with, I'm gonna work with a smaller stitch length. So before we get to the point where we're actually gonna attach the straps and say, yay, we're done, I have a new bag. I actually decided to go ahead and show you how to do the rivets. Um, so I use a rivet press. I find this a lot easier. I used to sweat buckets of, you know, of whatever every time I tried to attach rivets using a hammer. And I really didn't like it, so I got a press. Um, you don't have to have one. You can just use like the little rivet attachment tools or you can skip it, but I advise against skipping the rivets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark two little dots where I want the rivets to go. And I know like I can see this because, because the, it's uh, ballpoint ink, but you may wanna use something else. I have a press that I use right here. This little hand press is like maybe $10 on Amazon and it's a leather hole puncher. Um, and I just take it in here and line it up with the whole, the little dot that I made and I squeeze down and that punches the hole in place. Do the same thing to the other one. And then the same thing to the other side. Just punch those holes in. Always be careful, make sure they're nice and, uh, nice and open. Otherwise, it'd be impossible to get the rivet to go through. There you go, okay. So I've punched the holes in. And it's always scary to do this at the end of the bag. Again, that's like, if you mess up a rivet, it, it's really hard to kind of get back from it. 
So then what I do is I get the rivets that I want and the pattern calls for nine millimeters. So I'm gonna have nine millimeter and I put the long shaft through. So here's the long piece of the stud and it's gonna go through from the front. I take the cap and I put it on the back. And that's because in my experience, the longer stud ends up looking better in the end and that's the front of the bag. Now, then I take it and I put it in the press and the long shaft portion, meaning the front, is gonna go into the little, the little shaft here and I press it down. And you'll feel a little click. It's not audible, unfortunately, over, over my microphone, but you can feel it. And that's how you know it's in place. And so then we have two of the rivets. Now let's do the other side. I'm gonna take the longer end and go in from the front to the back on both of the holes. And then the caps on the back end. You can use longer rivets if you need to. So like if you need to use the Tandy leather um, uh, larger ones, then you can. Just make sure that you have the right press attachment if you're using a press. So long shaft at the bottom, pull down till you hear it will feel a little click. And there you go. And that's how you do that. So now for the very, 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 very final step. You're gonna take your belt piece and you're just gonna snap it right into place like that. And then take the thigh piece and take it and snap it into place as well. And that's basically it. This part goes around your leg this part goes around your waist, or if you want, you can just carry it like a regular purse. You really don't have to have it around your thigh or anything either, which is great. Um, these are great bags to carry around at conventions, hence the reason I called it Convention Raider. And also since it's a holster style, it's kind of like Tomb Raider, like an ode to Tomb Raider. So thank you very much. If you're interested in purchasing this pattern, it's available on my website, fiercekitten.com slash shop. And also, if you're uh, interested at the least in like uh, live streaming, I'm always on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. Eastern. And you can feel free to drop by and ask any questions or just say hi. So thank you very much. Feel free to like and subscribe this video and have a great day.